Hi everyone, I'm having a little problem with blue person here. They're very fast and there's nothing holding them back like a stamina system. So anytime there's a race, they always win no contest. And that's not really fair. Today we're going to add a stamina bar that goes down when you sprint and recuperates over time after a short period. We're going to move our run button, Y, over to the right and start building our stamina bar HUD. You'll have a head node on attached to a simple box. The bigger, the more stable it'll be. You'll leave it as visible and movable with a center and Z positive, so it's in front of the camera. We'll use a free slide to position the stamina bar where we want it. So we'll attach it to a small, simple box. We'll add the extending box, which is going to serve as our stamina bar that will either grow or shrink based on what we're doing. Connection points of X negative, X positive will make it extend only to the right, which is what we want. We'll make it green, set it to the side. We'll fine tune the free slide so that the bar is where we want it to be. In this case, I think negative three on the X axis and 1.5 on the Y will do just fine. Let me check. We need to make that original simple box invisible and make sure that the connection settings on the holder box are correct. They should be center center. Now that works better. We'll make it invisible. Our HUD is basically set up, so we're going to move it over to the side and start working on the counter that will manage the extension of the stamina bar. Our stamina is going to be recorded in this counter. It'll start at 100 and have a range of 0 to 100. Now you can play around with the numbers and how you choose to make the stamina go up and down and at what rate, but I think this worked well for this example and for smooth movement. We'll add a comparison and a zero constant node on, and we'll plug that into a wormhole entrance for later. That wormhole entrance will be our variable for whether we can perform an action that uses stamina or not. Now to make the counter represent itself on the extending box, we'll need a map node on with an input range of 0 to 100 and an output range of negative 1 to positive 1. We'll quickly do a button test to make sure everything's working with A and B. And you can see the stamina bar moves smoothly up and down. So now that we have the HUD element and the counter working, we'll move it all over to the side. We'll start working on the actual logic for the cooldown and the stamina usage. We'll bring back that wormhole, this time in an exit. When we can perform a stamina action and we press the button, we'll count down. Now, my instinct is to use timers here to manage the cooldown, but it doesn't work well because timers can't be interrupted. One way to count up or down and allow interruptions is to count time using a counter. With a constant input, it'll go up by 60 units every second because the game runs at 60 frames per second. So 120 units should be two seconds. And if we plug in our button press to the reset, whenever we're pressing or we quickly tap the button, it'll reset the counter down and it'll start counting back up to 120. This prevents any problems with timers not lining up properly. Then we can set it so that if the counter is equal to 120, then two seconds must have passed since we last pressed the Y button. And if that's the case, we'll want to start counting up our stamina. Now we can plug the can perform action and is pressing button into the stamina function to deplete it. And now it works. Blue person can sprint, run down his stamina, and wait two full seconds before it starts to regenerate. You can make the cooldown shorter by decreasing the amount that the counter counts up to. So instead of 120, it could be 60 for one second, which should keep things a little more fast paced if that's your intention.